Ladies and gentlemen, you have never seen motion clarity like this. Welcome to the next generation of OLED with brighter HDR and a mind-blowing 240 hertz refresh rate. It's actually a brand new type of OLED that's called MOA, and there's no doubt about it that this is actually a huge step forward for PC gaming, and this is one of the best gaming monitors in the world right now. However, it is definitely not perfect, and there are actually a couple of flaws that you wouldn't expect to see when you look at the spec sheet that do stop this from becoming the perfect gaming monitor. So let me explain absolutely everything you need to know after a short word from this video's sponsor. Corsair Murals is the ultimate way to get the RGB setups of your dreams. With Murals, you can sync together your Corsair components and peripherals for a truly show-stopping display, but now you can even integrate with both Philips Hue and Nanoleaf. You can create different effects based on colors, audio, or even your gameplay thanks to monitor capture. The end result is crazy. Download Corsair IQ for free and get started with murals today. So then, why should you be excited about this monitor? Well, because, put simply, it's the panel we've been waiting years for. A flat, 27-inch gaming monitor with OLED. And that itself is actually quite something, but the thing that really makes this extra special is the brand new OLED technique that's used to create brighter, more vibrant images, and even faster refresh rates. It's called MLA, which stands for Micro Lens Array, and LG say that this has been inspired by a dragonfly's eye, so imagine that, now think of the monitor, instead of having loads of light that gets lost within the panel itself, you have these micro lenses that actually allow the light to sort of be reflected back into your eyes. So you don't require any extra power to drive it, but you get higher brightnesses out of it, which is pretty clever. And in practice, it does actually work quite well. It's not just the brightness that's boosted too. The viewing angles are something you have to see to be believed, because on this monitor, I have to say it is the absolute best I've ever seen from a screen of any kind. You can move to almost any angle and there is no visual color or brightness shift at all. It is remarkable. But okay, I hear what you're saying. That's a little bit more party trick rather than die-hard PC gaming feature. So let's talk about the stuff that actually matters. Gaming performance. And I think it's fair to say that this monitor isn't going to win any awards for the most outrageous design, as it seems comparatively small when compared to its closest rival, Alienware's QD OLED Ultrawide. But to its credit, it will fit into smaller spaces more comfortably, and of course it will work great in multi-monitor setups. The bottom bezel is a bit more chunky than I'd like, but overall the design language works well and it is classic LG. Once connected, it will probably default to its native Quad HD resolution at a lower refresh rate, but when connected via HDMI 2.1 or DisplayPort 1.4 with DSC, you'll be able to get the full fat 240Hz without any overclocking at all. It also has FreeSync Premium, and this does work with G-Sync, though at the time of filming it's currently not recognised as formally G-Sync compatible, but I'm seeing some conflicting things on the LG website. And of course, the main advantage that OLED has always had when it comes to gaming is of course motion clarity, and usually you're looking at a response time of 0.1 milliseconds, whereas this doesn't have 0.1, this has 0.03. I know those might not be completely realistic, sort of best case scenario, but that is insane. So while it would probably be sensible to take this with a slight grain of salt, you cannot argue with the test UFO results, which are easily the clearest I have seen yet. It's pretty much zero motion blur at all at 240 hertz. So assuming you actually have a graphics card that can run a game at 240 FPS, you are going to be absolutely blown away. Ah, but yes, I know what you're thinking. Not all games can actually run at 240 hertz. So what is it actually like in practical terms. Well, in a word, stupendous. There is absolutely no doubt about it that Apex Legends works a treat here, with minuscule amounts of input lag and some of the lowest amounts of ghosting or motion blur available on the market today. Now, okay, unfortunately I have literally been out of the game for a while, so no Apex wins on the horizon for me just yet, but it is an absolute winner in its own regard when it comes to a display for Apex Legends, without a shadow of a doubt. Micro Lens Array isn't the only new technology this time around though, as there's actually a new smart boosting algorithm that I think they're calling Meta Booster. That actually aims to give HDR visuals a little bit more life and ultimately a bit more punch. My HDR game this time around was Cyberpunk 2077, as it pairs brilliant visuals with proper high dynamic range scenes. And here, the LG absolutely shines. 
quite literally, the extra brightness is immediately noticeable, with a peak brightness figure of 1000 nits, though as expected, it's usually a little bit lower in large or sustained scenes. It took quite a few tweaks in the cyberpunk menu to get this game looking its absolute best, but the combination of the colour accuracy, bright highlights, inky blacks, and most importantly of all, the lack of any form of haloing from backlights make this quite something to behold. So yeah, motion clarity and HDR visuals are absolutely sensational, no doubt about it. But unfortunately there are some issues with this display that as mentioned in the intro would genuinely prevent me from recommending this to everybody. The first one is a classic OLED issue, automatic brightness limiting, and in its default state, the whites actually get dimmer the bigger they are, which can be pretty jarring when you're using a PC monitor in a desktop. Fortunately, this can actually be resolved just by turning off the energy saving modes on the display, but then this reveals just how bad the menu system has gotten this time around. Like, it's genuinely laughable, not because it is the absolute worst, but because LG has always had the best one. Why would they do this? I mean, for context, look, if I want to access the menu, there's no four-way selector anymore. I've got to hold the button down a little bit, which sometimes mean you turn the display off. This wasn't even scripted, look. Oh. So you press it once to move, and you hold it down to select. What were they thinking? Hold on a minute, hold on. There is a redeeming feature of this. I can hear LG now saying, why haven't you mentioned this? Don't you worry, I will, because it's great. You also get a remote in the box. So if you want to change some quick settings, you've got them like brightness, volume, or you can just go into this menu here, look, and use this like so. It's really easy to use, it's fabulous, only flaw, what if you don't want a remote, or what if you lose it? Why is this not easier to use? You've had the four-way selector for years, it was great, why would you get rid of it? Bizarre behaviour. So far though, all of these problems have hardly been a deal breaker, but sadly the next two problems aren't really as solvable, and they are seriously going to affect your buying decision. The first of which, I would argue, is probably going to annoy a fair amount of people, and that's actually the brightness in STR, or the lack of it. My Spider-X calibration tool read a measly 160 nits at 100% brightness, which is frankly far too low for any brightly lit room to properly be comfortable. To be fair, I would argue that in this fairly dimly lit studio, it's actually been about right, but I shouldn't really have to have a monitor at 100% brightness. It doesn't give you the flexibility, and if you sit next to a window, chances are this is going to affect you. Especially bear in mind that this monitor in HDR mode goes way brighter, so I think a little bit of a firmware update would get this more where it needs, or at least should be. But then comes the really annoying problem, and the thing that has made me so frustrated from using this from start to finish, and that is the matte coating that they've actually put on this display. And again, I just sit here thinking, why? Why have you done this? Because it's just not very nice. It's even more frustrating because this is actually really difficult to show up on the camera, so I don't think you'd be able to see this without seeing it. But essentially, LG has added a non-reflective layer to the panel that does work a treat at reducing reflections on screen to minimal levels. But in doing so, they've introduced a coating of a sort of moiré to the screen that prevents the image from properly popping, and on white images, it almost makes it look a bit dirty. I'm really trying to think of the words to describe it, but you know, when you have almost a little bit of static on screen, or I don't know if you're staring at like a white wall and you see those like little tiny bits and things, that's what it's like. And when you're sort of moving windows across, you can just see it and you think, this is a thousand pound monitor. Surely it should look better than that, shouldn't it? I will caveat this with a very strong disclaimer that this does not affect gaming and video in quite the same way. It probably will be noticeable in slower paced games with large scenes of light, consistent colour, but then in something like Apex Legends, no complaints from me, I didn't really notice it. And here's the thing, for the same price of this, you can get Alienware's QD OLED Ultra Wide that just doesn't suffer from the same problems. Now, to be fair, it does have its own set of issues, the sub-pixel structures for one, and obviously quite a lot of reflections on that glossy screen, but I've got to admit, I prefer it. I also think the perceived sharpness on that monitor, despite the similar PPI, is actually slightly better because you've not got any of that moiré on the screen. And I've also been using that in a south-facing room, and yes, sometimes there's too much light, and I shut the blinds, but you know what? That's okay, and I think
think most people would probably just want to do the same. As with all LG monitors, I'd expect the price of this to come down a little bit from its launch price. So while $999 isn't unreasonable for what this offers when you compare it to the competition, I would probably advise waiting a little bit and checking current pricing every so often with my Amazon affiliate links that are listed down below. I'd say that if you want the most blur-free gaming monitor to date, you want something 16x9, something more normal size and that has amazing HDR, then clearly the GR95 is a winner, especially if you're gonna play something like FPS, this is clearly a force to be reckoned with. But for those that want one single display, something with maximum bang for the buck, a glossy coating, then the Alienware or the slightly more expensive Samsung QD OLEDs would be my personal recommendation. And if I had $1,000 to spend on a display, that's probably what I would go with. I would genuinely love to hear your thoughts on this though. What do you make of matte versus glossy? Is this something that matters to you? Have I got it wrong? Is this clearly the way to go? Or do you agree with me that maybe getting something slightly bigger and with a different panel is the way forward? I'd love to hear from you, so let me know down in the comment section below. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this, get subscribed, and of course, if you do wanna check current pricing out on this, you can find it linked down below with my Amazon affiliate links. And while you're down there, why not check out Corsair Murals? Having a fully integrated setup has never been easier. Just download IQ for free, enable third-party integrations like Philips Hue, Nanoleaf, and Asus Aura, and then just pick a theme. Personally, I love going for the all-white look with maybe a slight blue edge, but you can go as crazy or as calm as you like. Check out Mirrors today for free with the link down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. We'll catch you in the next one.